topic, just so important for me because I know I feel like I don't have control. I feel overwhelmed. What do I do? And so like the Always. idea of like, honing in on my strengths is really like grounding and it, it's empowering. And so I would love to like, let's go in on that because I was just I mean, your that. strength that, like, I really learned from you is, like, developing a routine. Um, mm -hmm. You hear people say it a lot, but I know you in real life. So I see you put that into play, and then I'm starting to, like, do those things because I saw somebody real doing it, right? So I was excited <laughs> about that because, like, every morning I'm like, yo, I'm going to start this whole routine thing again because it has not been a routine yet. Like, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Like, I'm just starting over every couple of days because you get sidetracked, you know, but you got to keep starting over to get it done. Yeah. So. Right. I was talking about um, my blueberries I was eating this morning. I was talking about to Lotus and we were talking about routines and rituals. And so we were talking about it from like a spiritual aspect or just from like a self-care aspect. But I feel like when it comes to like business and having your own business and working from home, it's hard for the lines to be blurred between like- It's business crazy. Business rituals or routines and then my personal routines and it's like, I always, always come back to, it doesn't matter what systems I have or don't have in place for my business, my personal routine needs to be, I always see the difference in my business or my day when like my personal, when I need like abide by my own ritual. So. No, I when know. I used to work corporate, I didn't have any time for myself in the morning. So I would just like rush to work. And now that I have, like I work from home, I take advantage of spending time with myself in the morning first before I get to my business. Because knowing me, if, if I slept on a thought, you know, that I was thinking about yesterday in my business, I know I want to like jump up and work on it right away. But like I need to take time for myself to, like you said, get centered and grounded in the morning before I start or else I'm going to be a mess. Yeah. Do you know what I started to do? I started to write, like, before I went to bed. Because, yo, sometimes I can go to sleep and I'll be so excited and so busy in the head. Because what I'm thinking about what I did or tomorrow or I'm excited about something, it could be hard for me to rest my mind because I'm, like, a million things at Too work. much. <laughs> so something I started to do was I started to write um, the things that I accomplished in the day. Okay. Yo, I definitely yeah. have not been doing that. I just have a task <laughs> list that never gets checked off, even though there's like stuff that gets done that I didn't write down. You know what right. I mean? Like I did stuff, but I definitely don't yeah. make a list. And I think I might accomplishments. But I just started doing it because I think I had you. Have, you know how you have we have like administration day. You have different days, or sometimes you plan for it. Sometimes the day could just be like, okay, I guess this day is about systems. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, I like, got to do a, it. Yeah, I had a day like that where it felt like a bunch of busy work, like a bunch of little things. And I know I got mad stuff done, but at the end of the day, I'm like, what the fuck? What did I do? I felt like I didn't do anything right. And so I was like, let me write out, because I know I did stuff today. I know. Things that That's because I think we take for granted the small stuff that we do that is a step toward all the bigger things that we're doing. So the small stuff that we do, that's a step bigger to the bigger stuff. Yo, what's, it's what's the one tiny small, wins, man? The tiny win. Oh, my God. What's the one small thing that you did that was like towards something bigger, something small? And I have to think about this, too, because this is a good one. Man, what have I done? You know what, like the brain dump, like a lot of the time, I'll just sit and write everything down that I'm thinking about, business ideas, et cetera. And that's a huge exercise for me because it always ends up to like panning out to be like a big project, an ebook or something, or like the brand deck came off like a list of stuff I wrote down. So it works. Right. The brain dump. Let me think. What's one small thing that I did that was towards something bigger? I probably have written down on my accomplishment list that day of stuff I did. In the many notebooks. Yeah, right? Um, I, I keep thinking about um, my email. 
um, platform that I signed up for, that to me was like something small. So I recently, I don't know if you all are familiar with like email platforms. I signed up, I've been signed up to MailChimp for about like six or seven years, for like a long time. And it's the best way to start too. It really it, is. It's, the, it's so good. But I found myself, I was outgrowing it. And so I decided to join a new email subscription, a platform called Active Campaign. Which is like, for me, it's like, oh, you're really leveling up. Like, oh, no, you are, because it's a little <laughs> too much for me. Like, no. Nope. No, Constant Contact is also, they're in the same lane. It's okay. not. Yeah, no, they are. I had Constant Contact before. Constant Contact is like, okay, I'm leveling up in my email. Right, right. And so that, to me, was such a, like, taking, it was something small, just switching over and making that decision to switch over. Like, I see the difference. I see it in, within the automation. It's a lot to get into. Like, it is, though. It's, it's. I love the platform, right? It's just you need a whole day, right? You need to wake up and be like, today's going to be email marketing day and get into right. it because it is a lot of work, like the technical stuff. The talking to everyone's great. Like, you know, it seems so easy, but yeah. your automations and your zaps. And your zaps. Something Shola read the other day, he read that, Instagram, if you're a photographer and Instagram posts your photos, Instagram now owns, has full rights to your photos. I kind of feel like that's going to be the same thing happening with artwork also, and it's scary. That's rude, first it's of scary. all. Scary. Like, you have no parts in this. At and all. so something I've been telling him is like, yo, not only are emails currency, but emails are really, um, it so allows you to kind of have more, um, ownership with your audience but also have like direct contact with them sure and so that to me is like something small that I think um you could overlook because maybe you're thinking about all of these other components to your business um no but the email me, list is key the email just like dedicating that to me is like a part of like the bigger picture like a hundred percent I mean you're owning your own audience like you were saying about like instagram and the photos like how many times for a couple of months ago was instagram down you know like i was running ads that day for my product and they didn't go out i had scheduled posts that didn't go out had i sent an email to my email list i still be able to connect with those people and and now i've lost that that momentum which was like ridiculous and i wasn't ready yet but Forward That's movements, another. you know, right. forward movements and like yeah. <laughs> doing the things you need to be doing. So right. I was on a live earlier and you was on it and it kept her sound. We couldn't hear her sound. It kept pausing or freezing. Um, but more importantly, her sound just gave out. And so right. we had to restart it at least three or four times. And so it was it ended up to being one of the best IG lives I've done. And that said a lot. Because every IG Live I've done so far has been like a 20. Right. I've had such amazing experiences on my live, but it was it was amazing. And I think, I don't know if it had to do with the technical difficulties, you know, when something's better because it just seems like there's more challenges. I think um, everybody, man, these days, it's like a part of the, the woven into this new virtual world is like yeah. technical difficulties. Like. Right, right, right. And I feel like thinking about like owning your just having more ownership with your audience and so that was you know for me that small thing deciding to move from MailChimp to active campaign that was and I see I see the the benefits like every day it's really right. amazing knowing things that are like working for you all right so I want to move into home systems for your business okay Okay. And I know that's like a loaded, like, what does that mean? Right. But like, I'll, I'll, I'll give one okay. um, that I've been sharing in a lot of my podcasts and my lives. So like choosing a designated place to work. So important. Like, so important. You need to be able to walk away from your workspace. Oh my goodness. And turn off. Right. Like, you used to rush to the door when you had a job, right? Like, to get yeah, out of there. Right. Like, where are you running from if you don't create space yeah. for yourself? So what would you... I know for me, 
how do you organize and i share like how i organize like my workstation um because i know some people may not have uh, another bedroom to work in they right. may not even have like a work desk right so like I always think about like what are practical ways that you can organize your workstation no matter the context, um, gotcha. no matter the circumstance. Um, so like, how do you organize your workstation? Well, so I've upgraded. So I personally now have my own room, but before that happened, like I literally had like a, like a work stool basically that like I would pull out that was just big enough to hold my laptop hold my notebook and when that was out that was like work time right because my laptop now had a space to sit so I knew it was work time I wasn't like trying to move everything else that's a normal home space to make space for my laptop like that was my <laughs> laptop space so I worked off that I was like drawing on there all the time you know trying to get things done on the couch you know um even sometimes, like, going in the bathroom, shutting the door, like, I have a loud dog, I have, like, you know, a man who lives with me, my, you know, my boyfriend, he doesn't want to hear me either, so I, I sometimes need to go away and, like, lock myself in the bathroom, my time, me time, and just, like, get stuff done on my stool, like, right, just get it done, that was, like, my space, and I was able to, like, zone out, like, control the lights and not bothering anyone else in my space. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it made things a lot easier. Right. Thinking about what you need to just get to zone out. That's really important for you. It's just about like be having somewhere to sit. Very Sometimes I need the door too, you know, and that's why I wanted mm -hmm. to like pop into the bathroom, like, and just be able to like close off everything else, especially if yeah. you don't have another room and like, like, 2 a.m. you're up working you know what I mean sleep like hop in there and like go work and I got a lot done man I mean yeah. that was a side hustle time so those late hours you can't be out working at, you know in the main right. spaces of your home with everybody else like right no I love it's like very simple but like straight to the point and I think I know for me what helps me it see and it seems like so obvious like a clean um workstation or like ending my day where there's nothing on the on my desk so like right now i have like my cup of tea and my water but it didn't start out that way like when i started the day it was just you know my keypad and my mouse right and i think something like work from home but workstation tips is really having a home for everything and Huge. your your desk isn't a drop off center for your items, right? And I think a lot of times we have everything there at once, and it's different when you're working versus when you end the work day. It's about like okay, replenishing your station. And so yep. for me, I have a place for my notebooks that I bring to the workstation, but the notebooks don't live at that workstation. Okay. Now, if you have drawers, you know drawers, oh, which would be so oh. nice. I wish I had a drawer on my desk. Yeah. Oh man that is different then the drawer could be your home for your tablets your notebooks and your pens and so i think when i um think of workstations it's like keeping it clear especially if you are using multi if your workstation is like a multi work place so like right. maybe you're working at your island kitchen so you may also be chopping food or you may also True you know, be eating at your island kitchen. So you want to make sure that you have like cutoff times to create those boundaries for working and now working hours. So boundaries, I know for me, it's like just a clear workstation. So boundaries a place for everything. No boundaries for everything, man. <laughs> I think that's so, like been my keyword for the day. <laughs> yo, so speaking of boundaries, like as you were talking, you made me think of the difference between our work life and our personal life and our home life. And I think sometimes those all blend together and sometimes they're all, they kind of overlap and there's no line where there one starts really and ends. isn't. It's just kind of everything is everything. And I, I, I'm so, I'm indifferent about that um, because I think sometimes it does overlap and then sometimes right. it's like, okay, we need distinct um, differences between where work 
and just start just like a workstation just like type of the sometimes i won't shut myself off yes. so i have to have that or i have right. to force myself to walk away i honestly self to walk away i honestly can get into like a 10 hour work session because i'm in a comfortable space so it's yeah. not like i'm at a desk at my job where i don't want to be like i made it comfortable where i work now so i this could just be an all day situation if i don't set a time to walk away like yes. my day is pretty scheduled right now you know even though we're in a situation that we're in, I have to keep that schedule or else stuff's not going to get done. Like I won't right. force myself to do the things that I need to do. So. Right, right. And there's so much to be said about work hours. I know for me, I've been experiencing these high energy weeks or days. Right. And some days where I feel low energy and I think I've given my self-permission to go with that flow right go with the flow of like hey tap into this energy you're feeling right and then days where it's like yo your body my body and my spirit is telling me like you need to tap out oh there's definitely <laughs> i've taken a couple of those in like the last week and have not felt guilty not even a bit for it like at all right right, right. that guilt man so, but when you put in the work, you know, you really can't, you can't feel guilty if you put in the work every other time you deserve true. that break, you know, That's very true. And I feel like when you have a work station or even a work area, the workstation could be anywhere that you choose. I think it's about like deciding, choosing it and then deciding it's the workstation. Like definitely I think, and staying consistent. Yes. Staying consistent. Because you can easily go sit somewhere else and work right like it's right, right. where you are yeah. so <laughs> i think it's like allowing your mind that muscle memory i keep talking this keeps coming up in all of my lives that muscle memory mm. of like it's time to work and then it's almost like you're, you're training your brain i'm like no <laughs> wait no what working's been rough man <laughs> let's talk about it <laughs> but i've been doing it i've been pushing what is what has been the toughest what has been the toughest business task that you have to do i feel like i don't want to i don't want to expose us but what's like thank the goodness they extended the tax day for businesses because that attempting to look at that portion right to be the bookkeeper in my business to be like my own accountant wake up with i'm ready to go and like nope not today and i think i waited for that email to come in and i was like guess what you don't worry about it for another two months <laughs> right right, right, right. i avoid it i kiss it's a lot yeah it's a lot because everything else is a lot you're doing everything mm -hmm. by yourself you know when you're a solopreneur and you're trying to balance all the hats like finance like kidding me that's like taking an elective math class like nah nah i don't want it i'm all so right I want to ask you all, um, give a heart or, you know, raise your hand if you have a business or a side hustle or you want to start something. And if you do, I want you all to put in the questions, what are some of your bi biggest struggles with your business side hustle um, as you're working from home during this time? Like, what are your biggest struggles? Because I feel like you know, creating those boundaries, creating those systems, having like a workflow, it's really not easy. And I think um, not only asking other people that are doing it, but also like exchanging the struggles, because I agree with you when it comes to taxes, it's just like, oh my God. Uh, like, man, <laughs> I wish one of the people that we knew was like, hey, guys, I want to help you out with your finances. Like, you know, you have your tips. I got my tips. Like, where's the finance tip right. friend that we need so bad? <laughs> yeah, anybody know, anyone deal with, like, business, business tax services or know someone that helps, like, entrepreneurs with their taxes? Because I feel like I don't see, I don't, I see people... Specifically with like personal finances, but it's like, no, 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 no. not my personal finances, like my business. And I don't want to like do like an H&R block business guy. Like I'm not trying to do that either. Yeah. Like I need to talk to like an actual human being, a real person with a vibe so they can talk to me right. because I'm going to cry. Right, right. right <laughs> it's right. a lot. 
it feels very overwhelming. It feels um, impossible. And I, I definitely think to our point, it's really good to like identify what are the things that we need help with? What are the things where it's like, I, how do you know what you need help in if you don't know? Right. I feel like that's a skill too, knowing what you need help in. Right. What's something that like in the beginning, you didn't even know that you needed help with until like after the fact, like now you can say in hindsight, um, we could just think like, so I had no, I, I had not, no idea about sales. Mm. Like, so yes, I do things. Yes, I want to make money doing things, but I didn't know how to like actually sell it. And I had to get a coach to show me how to do that. That was the only thing. And that felt like a huge hurdle for me because it wasn't like trying to brainstorm an idea, right? It wasn't like trying to find what I'm good at. A lot of people told me what I was good at and I decided to like take their word for it for once and go with it. And I needed help with that. It, like having the right language and not feeling weird about selling mm. because sometimes I think you can feel awkward because what you're pushing off something that you're exchanging money with right. other people. And like, you know, what you have is good and you know, your heart is good, but like still selling feels so like skeevy mm -hmm. sometimes. Like yeah. I don't, I need to know how to do it where it doesn't feel that way. And I'm so glad I got that outside help because it changed the way that I do business. Now it feels more natural because it is natural, right? It's just right. me telling you what I do, like, right, right in a strategic right. way. For sure. Ha Ooh, sales. So I don't want to confuse in your, so y'all, Jen has a deck through her brand on brand deck. And so the deck helps you with, branding and the th and really like the things that you need as a startup business in the order that you need them and so she really breaks it down i don't know if i'm like if that's like how you explain it but it basically yeah like you were saying it really just helps you like figure out what you need to be thinking about in the beginning of your business right like who you are what makes you unique because honestly we're all basically at the the main point doing the same thing as other people are doing but it's about figuring out why you're different than others. And that's what that deck is going to help you do. So mm -hmm. that was yeah. sitting and, and then, talking with a bunch of other people. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember if this is for your new deck or this deck, but is a part of, I think it's in your workbook where you tell business owners, they may um, express the problem that they have. And then you tell them the service who they need to hire or what they need. Is that oh, your workbook? That's the deck coming. That's the deck. Oh, okay. that's the deck coming. And okay. I'm really okay. excited about it because I just basically pulled all the questions that I've been getting from side hustlers and solopreneurs and wanted to figure out a system that would help you figure out what you needed to do. There's like a lot of components that go in. And I think people get wrapped up in the idea that there's a lot and then you don't move forward because you're like, where do I start? I don't even know where to start. And right, right. The decks really help you just take a step and like just once you take that first step you're going to start to do the rest of no, what needs to be done like there's yes. a momentum that builds from that and excitement that builds from that once you're like figuring out it's not as hard as you thought it was right, right, so right. for sure and i love your deck is because it gives it's something tangible and it gives people like a fun simple way to like get started because i feel like that's usually the hardest part getting started and i love what you talked about in the beginning i feel like we're kind of touching back on on like strength and really focusing on like what you're good at. And I know for me, it really cuts the fat out of anything I'm dealing with or working on or wanting to address. It's like, okay, what am I good at? And even thinking about like your uh, class with me, with Mem Connect, really talking about like your mission statement. And I think um, when you're really connected to what makes you you it's really helpful to um identify like why you're starting what you're starting and what you what you can focus on like and that's really going to help you stand out and it really helps you to organize it, it basically doing. does like i've always had a mission and it's funny that 
I wasn't using it as my guide, which is what I'm teaching people to do. But during this whole situation, I realized, because my mission is to help people do what I'm doing, right? I want it to make it as easy as possible for everyone to not have to work for other people if that's not what they want to do, right? right? Like, because people can make money with their talents and skills. You just have to be able to, like, take the right steps to do it. And, like, people have done it before us, so we can all go ahead and do it. You know what I mean? For sure. But it's about my mission is about helping and like really taking that pivoting right now and just offering help, like nothing in exchange. Like I just basically want to help people do the same thing, right? Pivot right now during what situation is going on, not to be discouraged with the situation that's going on, right? To be able to take like there are 168 hours in the week and like there's a bunch of like hours we can be sad and a bunch of hours we can take for ourselves. And there's also like, couple hours like seven six hours we can take for our business right to like move forward and like i have like the quarantine calls which is just like if you need to brainstorm let's sit down and talk about what's going on like for free you know like because it's necessary sometimes you just need to toss ideas around with other people and you don't have those people around to talk to for sure i love that oh my god you just gave so much just now Um, And it made me think of my earlier question to you that I didn't answer for myself, like something in my business that I didn't know I needed clarity on that now I know. So for me, it was really about how to present what I offer to people in a clear way. That was something it took. I feel like it took me years. Right. It took me years. And it's so funny because. Like, I have so many lists growing up. I just would write lists. I have lists and lists and lists. And professional organizer has been on that list for a very long time. Awesome. It didn't occur to me how to present that as a business or a skill. And so I think tapping into the things that make me tick, tapping into the things that I love, it helped me to cut away the fat and really formulate um, how am I going to brand myself and so that I didn't know that I needed that and I think that's a year right I think with your business like you you your your deck like you make it so much easier to like help with that process and I'm really excited for this class because like the mission Me statement too. is like a good way to like ground in your strength ground in your branding and ground in like how do you organize yourself and what you need to do and where you need to start or keep going with it so for me thinking about organizing as a skill for me, like that is something that comes very naturally. And I think being able to extract all of that wisdom and knowledge on down, right. To be able to give it to others. Right. But also being able to like brand it in a way, because I'm not the only person that's good at organizing. Exactly. Person that has a professional organizing business. Like I'm not the only one. So like, what is it about me? And I, you know what? Analogy I'm using now. you as an example already <laughs> because honestly, you do a really good job because a lot of people do say, right, you're like, you're like the black Marie Kondo, but like, honestly, no, you're your own person doing your own thing, delivering your message in your own way. Y'all yeah. just both declutter. You know what I mean? Right. And that's the only similarity. And that's what I was saying back to those core things that we right. do. It's exactly the same thing as other right. people, but we're all doing it differently. You're doing it really well. Really Thank well. you so much. And it's and it's so funny because seeing how you distinguish yourself, I think there's something fearful or just not fear. No, you could be afraid to, I think, see your business as a niche. But it's like, yo, that is the superpower. Like that. It really is man. owning it. Like, cause it, if your authenticity comes through and like you own that man, everything else comes so much easier. Right. If you're really, if you're helping your niche, if you're actually answering, solving their problems, baby, literally you don't have to worry about anything else. And, and I you don't. love, and I love that. And I, and I learned that from um, Marie Folio. I've been following her for like over 10 years and she has same things. Um, if you're talking to everybody, you're talking to nobody. And I think it's amazing because it's like, it really so true. helps you cut out the fat. It's like, yo, I need to talk to this one person. So I'm thinking of strengths and I'm thinking of the home. And I know that this is one, of, this is something I'm going to be talking about later on mm-hmm. another live that's coming up. But like a lot of people organizing their home is not a strength, right? However, 
being uh, focusing on their business and the skill that they're using, that's their strength. And so it's like, how do you bring them together? It's like, I'm not good. I need, Man. To, I need to be organized. I need to be organized. I can't be a business owner. And now I'm, well, there are some people that are business owners and not organized, but it's right. like, you realize how much organization you need in your life to have a business because it's just like, okay, you do a lot going on, but it's like to be a functioning business, like you have to be, you have to be organized. You have to be a functioning adult. You have to be a functioning You know, adult. there's like a lot of steps that go into that. Like, right. I gotta eat, you know what I mean? Like, I gotta, I gotta think eat. about all <laughs> that stuff. I'm like, you yeah, know, someone remind me, like, I gotta eat. Like, just that basic. <laughs> like, no, actually that? eat food. Like, can we talk about that? <laughs> Y'all, give me a heart or put it in or something. If eating is something that you have to like set an alarm for or remind yourself. Like, please, why oh, yeah. is this so hard? It's Back in the day, I took better care of my sim right. than I did of like myself. <laughs> it's like bittersweet. It's like, okay, it's good. I'm really into what I'm doing. I'm really, I'm really connected. I'm really like passionate. But it's like, all right, girl, but you can't starve. Because... Right. <laughs> so like organizing that kitchen. And I told you that's my biggest thing in the house is like having an organized kitchen that yeah. when I walk in there, I actually want to do things. I want to make an amazing meal because things look nice. Right, right. Like, it's not the best kitchen. I'm not living in, like, this gorgeous counters like I see that you have. So, you know, I'll have to make do with small areas <laughs> to so, make my food. So I'll give y'all some really good tips. And Please. Is, and I think these tips can help anyone who doesn't have a business, but they're especially, especially helpful for, like, business owners. So what I do is I like to batch cook. So that just means cooking in large quantities. So when I go food shopping, I'm thinking – what can I, before I go food shopping, I'm thinking of recipes and things that I can cook where I can make a large amount of where it's right. delicious and I want to eat it, but I can store it. So like recently I made like a Indian adjacent meal. It was really good. Okay. So okay. It was, just some fusion. Yeah. So it was basically just like curry stew with some basmati rice and all of those things. And so what I did was I was able to make a large pot of it. Right. It really stews and things like that you can make a lot of I actually stuff. have to do that too. yeah and if and and what I love about stews is this, the first is to make it really delicious you really want to start with like the foundations and the spices but you can still make a huge pot and so what I yeah. did was I separated it to, into small containers and then I froze a big a lot I froze oh, a big cool. container okay. and so having the small containers the next few days I was able to just pull it out of my fridge right put it in the microwave or put it in the oven or put it on the stove top and just eat it as I go so this is good I just ordered yeah, mason jars yeah. and I whole think it's bunch super helpful when it's like you don't feel like going in the kitchen and cooking a full meal but you need a good meal and right so I think batch cooking is such a um, cooking in large quantities meal prep and I think um a lot of us have a hard time meal prepping because I, I need to take notes overwhelming <laughs> So, okay, this is how you take the overwhelm out of meal prepping. Please. This is how you take the overwhelm. Order a cohesive container set. I, I have my glass set, the silicone wraps. Yes. I think glass is the best one because it doesn't stain. So you can keep it for a long time. Especially with something like the curry. Something like curry. The second is the glass containers, you can pop it out of the fridge, it could defrost, and then you could pop it straight into the oven, too. Yeah. So a lot of those glass Tupperware, it really helps to, you can have multiple uses of it. So, so I never thought about putting it in yeah, the oven. Yeah, pop it in the oven. So if but you, that's glass. Yeah. So if you are having trouble with, like, which ones to get, I have an Amazon shop, so you can go to Amazon.com slash shop, Organize for Love, and you can shop my idea list. And so I, I organized it into like different rooms. So I have like a fridge organization list and I have a kitchen organization list. So you can just go and shop. And awesome. I especially put the materials that you need to align with the tips that I give. So no matter which direction you're coming from, I already have the materials you need. These are like the basic materials that help that make it so easy. Got you. Because the, the, the kitchen, like the re the fridge situation means to look yes. the fridge situation. something yes. better. And so when you're when you're batch cooking, sometimes the overwhelm of cooking really is about 
starting you don't know where to start so once you have your containers you are able to divide the food into your containers you can freeze them another tip that i like to do when i go grocery shopping just to help with eating in my home i buy um so sometimes i'll have a shopping trip where it's all produce and then another shopping trip where i'm focusing on meat right so that's like my fish and chicken and my steaks or whatever and so what i do is i take out my tupperware and i season all of my meat at once so if you decide to buy your meat season, that's fine too. But I like to yes. mine. So you season it and then you freeze it. And so that way, when you're ready to cook it, you just take it out of the freezer. You defrost it overnight in the fridge or whatever right. throughout the day. And then you're able to like pop it in the oven. Yes. And so that okay. way you just have your meat ready to cook. And so this is helpful if you're working and you're in the zone and you need to man eat. please i've been eat. doing three meals a day and like walking away from my work to go yeah. eat something and to cook a full meal from scratch is a no-go yeah so i know for me sometimes i like cooking from scratch but there's some weeks where it's like this is not gonna work for me no so the batch cooking one other tip with batch cooking give me a heart or an amen if you love waffles i absolutely i had this obsession i don't know what it is about i absolutely love waffles waffles are so good i had waffles with almond butter on it life-changing just a little drizzle of syrup so you coming over all right so good (laughs) so good okay so i love waffles and so i think sometimes i don't want to buy eggos which i used to i don't want to buy them so I like to buy, I like to make a batch of waffles. And if you have a waffle iron, it's super easy to make a bunch at once. So I have my batter, I make it, and then I buy um, Ziploc bags, reusable Ziploc bags. And then I just put in the waffles like two or three at a time. And I freeze it. And then when I'm ready to eat it. And those I little silicone it. bags you used to have? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. I just take it cool. out of the freezer and I put it in the toaster. And it's super, it's super easy because then I can just eat it with some syrup or like a plate with some fruit. Boom. And Basically. so it's good for like a set. If you get up really early, you may have two breakfasts. So it's a great second breakfast. So that's what you said you made you breakfast and brunch. Breakfast and brunch. I eat a lot. Oh my God. Like I eat so much. And so I like to eat cookie butter and fresh fruit oh yes. man yes cookie butter yes, loaded oh man loaded. next it's order problem. cookie butter is problem so, so good that's one way i think for like if you're side hustling or have a business that's a good way to like keep your home organized or to organize and eat because it's such a basic thing that feels so like stressful and it is it, it is have to be um it doesn't have to be um so i'm trying to think of that's like for cooking those are like my favorite, um, my favorite tips. Space saving. I actually just did a um, a blog post about space saving for small kitchens. My kitchen was not always this big. Bam. So I love organizing God, I small I love spaces. those counters. You said what? The counters? I no. really can't get enough. I was <laughs> just like, I want to cut every type of meal, like at the same time, just to see it on there. Yo, God it's gorgeous. Is good. God is so good. Because I remember when we first moved in here, literally the counter is what. <laughs> this was like, oh, this is it. It's so big. Let me see. What? Shola was laying on it in the live, wasn't he? The other day. <laughs> yes. It's so big. <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's so, so pretty. It's so big. So it's like Goals. my kitchen table. But it was not always like this, you guys. So I'm being real. It was not always like this. And I've definitely lived in very, very small kitchens. Some places I didn't have a kitchen. So quick tips on working in a small kitchen. So you want to maximize your shelving and your wall space. Anytime you don't have space Mm -hmm. in your home, you want to lift things up. You want to focus on the height. Because a lot of times we have wall space that is not being used. So if it's not building shelves, it's really just, putting things on top. So if it's not the height on the walls, it's the height in the cabinets, right? Right. So if you have cabinets, a lot of cabinets may not come with shelving. So like under sink things. So you want to add height. So this means buying a under sink organizer. 
Yeah. Um, and a lot of those are expandable, so it can adjust to the size of your under. Oh, nice. I did not yeah. know there were expandable yeah, ones. Okay. Expandable. Look at me and trying to measure my cabinet yes. to the store. No, you don't have to measure it. Cool. It's like at height. So I have all of these things in my Amazon shop. So if you go to amazon.com slash shop slash organize for love, then I have a list space saving tips for small kitchens no and all of the tips I get. You want to clear your counters. That to me, clear your counters. So clear your I don't counters. know why you're directly talking to me about clearing my <laughs> counters off right now. And I'm sorry. And I'm going to do it when I get off the live. Like, <laughs> no. So right. if you go to, if you go to my page um, and you go to my links, I have a link to my blog post. Space saving tips for small kitchens. It gives you all of the um, the items. So one thing you can do, you can buy a paper towel holder that you can connect to your wall or under your sink. So you want to relieve your counter space of that. Another thing you can do, you can get a. Um, this is what a lot of people don't know that I. So go in your cat. Everybody, you can do this now. Take your phone with you to the kitchen. Go into your kitchen, open your cabinets, and look at the pegs on the side of your cabinets. If those cap, if those that's pegs, why you posted that. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people get that, and I, I need to do a video to show. If those, see if those, most of the pegs are removable. You may find that you have these tall oils, your apple cider vinegar, you can't fit them into your cabinet. But a lot of times, your cabinet pegs can come out, and you can lift the shelving up. A shelf or two and you have taller space so you same can thing in the fridge oil. too and you just they like take it and you're just like this is how my fridge is these same are the cabinets yes <laughs> no, no no same thing in your fridge exactly so the shelving in your fridge you can lift it up and so it's a super quick way and i think i definitely have experienced <laughs> not having shelving space and like having to like leave the oils on my counter and i'm like girl right Right. And I've just discovered like, yo, these actually remove some of them not not as easy as others. But if you remove it, you can just lift it and then add your oils and relieve oh, your definitely willing to try to do it yes. because there's no way. I like yes. the, the kitchen needs to be managed. Okay. Another it's time. way to organize your kitchen is you want to maximize your drawer space. So that means that you want to adjust how many, how much you own to the space that you have. And I know that's really, really hard. It's really, really hard. But if you have this amount of drawer space, you need to maximize it, right? Right. So you really want to get clear on the spatulas and things that you use and really cut down on what you don't use. And so just... Especially when you get those sets. You know you don't need uh, half the things in those the sets. sets. <laughs> the utensils. A lot of us have like a bajillion forks and spoons and it's only like four people in the house. You don't need 10 spoons. Because that's just more dishes. I'm like, what? I'm sorry. If you have what a business, you don't have time. Me and my nine plates that I like, I cannot. Yeah. I'm like, I'm sitting on the plate. Out of the cabinet. All right, so like, that's a couple of my tips. I think anyone can use these tips, but I think when it comes like specifically for entrepreneurs, like just making it easy, especially if you don't have a place to work, a lot of us are using our kitchen counters and our kitchen um, tables. True. Your dining room table a lot of times ends up being like your workspace. And so kitchen seems to be like a clutter space. So those are some gems for y'all. You're welcome. I'm like, yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> because I just, I have to pass the kitchen to walk like, like everywhere right so it's like horrible i just like head down I'm like yeah, i don't gotta no. eat I'm walking through this mess right have you ever noticed that when you're eating well like you're you're working better oh i'm clear-headed like everything is great right. like i feel like a different person you can't tell me anything i'm like mm, i had my smoothie and a little side salad today with my meal that i made like mock like my quinoa, like whatever, like such a food snob, like that. <laughs> I know. Seriously, Good like, food. When I eat it, when I drink my juice and my smoothie in the morning, you can't tell me the right. <laughs> That's it. Like hit the ground running. Like I'm good to go. Right, right. And I think um, there's something about the way we nourish our bodies that really it directly impacts how we work. And so self care. Like, that's what that is. Yes. 
Yeah. Even though it's eating for me, it, it really is a self like self care act. Like because I have to be intentional about eating. Right, right, right. All right, y'all. We have a little less than fifteen minutes. Ask these questions right now, y'all. So while you all went to your kitchen, is there anything in your kitchen where you're like, how do I do this? Drop the question. I can answer. I'm pretty sure if you have that issue, don't be selfish because someone else probably has the same issue. For sure. Anyway. No, I have a crappy kitchen, so you got me. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those. What other... How else can businesses tap into their strengths when it comes to their branding? It's really about sitting down and like completely being full of yourself, right? And writing down, because no one else is seeing this list, it's just you writing out why you're the shit at what it is you're about to be doing, right? Like, like let those be your affirmations about why you're going to be going forward and working on this because you know you have these strengths, but like, don't rely on other people sometimes to tell you that. You got to tell yourself that. Like, right. write down why you're going to be making all of this money because you're you. Like, right. you have to tell yourself that. Mm -hmm. It's a huge part. And, like, once you start writing that list, once you, like, clean it up, take a little bit out, you know what I mean? You can deliver it to your customers. It's really essentially, like, your strengths and your unique factor. Like, that's what you're pulling out of it. Excuse me. And we talk about this a lot, too. And I think it's easier said than done, but really the thing that distinguishes you from other people like that is really a game changer. It's the thing that people have been telling you all the time, like your friends have been telling you, and I know you probably like push it off because you're like, of course my friends are going to be like, yeah, you're good at this. Yeah, you're great. But like for real though, like people don't have to tell you you're good at things. So when they tell you you're good at things, accept the compliment, take it. And actually think about it, like, wow, what did I just do that made them say that? Is this something I do often? Maybe that's my strength. Like, it's in the messages you're getting from people, you know what I mean? You just have to listen. Mm. I, um, I definitely love that. People tell you what you're good at, and it's really about, like, tapping into that. So I'm A hundred percent. I'm putting my Amazon shop because I have all of the things that I'm suggesting to you all. Which I have to get on, like, really, because. Look at oh, man. Especially because I'm not even thinking I'm using a lot of the space underneath my sink, so. Yes. yes. Okay, so people are asking about pots and pans and appliances. So, again, I just wrote a blog post on saving space in your small kitchen. So, go to Organize for Love Instagram page, go to links, and there it says kitchen space saving tips. Dope. So I have all of these links or you can just go straight to the Amazon shop. So in terms of pots and pans, you really want to look at your kitchen and see what are the positive things that your kitchen offers. So does your kitchen have mm. tall ceilings? Is there a lot of wall space? Is there a lot of cabinet space? What is something good in your kitchen that your kitchen offers you? And so if you have a lot of wall space or tall ceilings, right? You may, you may want to consider hanging your pot. Hanging the pot. Hanging the pot. Just utilize what your kitchen. Like you. people do in pretty homes. Yeah, like I and have it's, wall it's space. It's not hard. Ikea, Amazon, they have really great options. So you can either put it on the wall or have it hanging from the ceiling. Super, super easy. Um, or if you have a lot of cabinet space, you may want to get a, uh, a pull-out pot drawer. So they have... Um, oh, yeah, they okay. have a way you can okay. pull it out, and so you can stack your pots that way. Either underneath the actual drawer, you can hang them in the cabinet, or you can just stack them um, in the cabinet drawer. They also have these cool organization pot holders where it's like a um, it's like a divider, <laughs> like, like a like a dish so like a, thing. So like a disc thing, I'm sorry, the, the name of it is Leaving Me, um, but it, it is in my Amazon shop. And so you're able to stack your pots vertically or horizontally. So you can stack them up high or you can stack them up. Um, Perfect. Because currently they're on top of my stove. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they just kind of get shifted around right, with the burners right. that are used. So. so those are two things. You can hang your pots 
I love the idea of painting them. It really takes... It looks nice. It like, looks it looks really, really good. Nice. And it may encourage you to get, like, a nice pot set. But it, regardless, is very practical because you take the space out of your cabinet and you create more space by hanging them. Um, and the mismatched pot pots, it's, like, abstract. It's art. abstract. So you're all right. <laughs> you don't have to go out and get a matching set. You're all right. <laughs> and I love that. It's abstract. Um, someone mentioned appliances. Okay, so you may not like this, but like, think about all purpose appliances. So if you have a toaster, and you're using multiple things, you may want to think about getting a toaster oven because a toaster mm. oven can serve as multiple purposes and you can get rid of your toaster oven, your toaster. Um, so that's what I think about appliances really like declutter, like what are you actually using? Right? Um, yeah, because if you have no place to put them, it's like, are you, are you really using them? Um, so now yeah. I wish I had that waffle maker because I definitely did that thing and got rid of my waffle maker. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, I really want to use this. Like once a year is not yeah. using a waffle maker, it's not like Christmas waffles. It's like ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Any closing word, any last questions before we end this live? This was great. I this was this fun. Was super helpful for like, uh, some of our business owner friends, because I know a lot of, a lot of my audience is um, business owners or doing their thing. Mm -hmm. So any questions, you guys, I see some people still joining us. Um, let me make sure that is the right, I believe that's the right shop. Yeah, amazon.com slash shop. Any last party Look words? And... Uh, I'm just happy we did this. Mm -hmm. We've got some really great stuff to talk about off camera. I'm excited. We've got some new stuff to bring to people. So yeah. I, I'm really looking forward to it. Yes, me too. Um, I would love to. I want to part by saying thank you so much, Jen. And thank you guys for being here. Appreciate yes. it. Yes. I want to part with one last tip. I think you all maybe think about creating. Um, how long have you been doing this? Um, so I have been organizing for about 15 years. Um, and I started Organize for Love towards the end of 2018. It feels like I, it doesn't feel like it was 20. When I say that, I'm like, it feels like yesterday. Man. And even when I met you, I was like, you just started. Like, <laughs> you just had everything together. Like, it was well thought out. So I know your lists over the years really worked. So. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. But I've been, I think, organizing my own things for, like, over 15 years in my own homes. And so I think bringing it to others, it was something organic about it. Um, but what about you? How long have you been doing this, Jen? Man, like actually, like now the strategy sessions and things like that have been seriously for like four years, right? But I only started actually monetizing them maybe in the past six months. And I was just like wow. throwing free information. Like, you've got time to sit down. Well, I've got time to tell you about how you can change it and like help you out. And like, you should do this with your paintings. And like, honestly, that was a strength that mm. it's like a supply and demand situation. Once you realize that many people are coming to you to ask you the same questions, it's like, maybe I should put a price on some of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there's a... There's a free level and there's a paid level, but yeah. you have to monetize your strengths. So. Yeah. I think yeah. what you're talking about is like creating a system. And a business is like, I'm creating a business system to be able to funnel my strengths and provide the help and support that people need. So Right, because I started out as a creative, right. like the whole struggling artist, you know, doing logo designs here and there, but logo is essentially a part of branding. Yeah. And not realizing that everything else was already there, you know, putting it together and packaging it up. Yeah, that yeah. made it real. And what you do is so essential because it's like, how, how do you, a lot of people have trouble like branding themselves, but, um, but no, I want to say thank you again. Jen, this was amazing. It was. Thank you. And I want to thank you all so much for coming. This was awesome. Hit the shop. Yeah. Definitely uh, look for that on brand class, the mission yes. statement. Yes. I'm excited. So. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. Bye. I will see y'all on my next live on Saturday. Killing it. Yes. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>